Hi, this is Michael Josephson for the Josephson Institute of Ethics. I want to talk today about the notion of how do you really create an ethical culture? Now, I'm talking about more than just setting up the rules and the training programs to be sure they have the rules. And I'm talking about more than how do we articulate and promote our value statement so people understand that. I'm talking about the idea of creating a culture where it's far easier to do the right thing and much harder to do the wrong thing. In reality, unfortunately, many, many organizations have the opposite of an ethical culture. It frankly is usually easier to do the wrong thing, to take the shortcut, than it is to do the right thing. So what are you trying to do? Well, first of all, you obviously have to know what it would look like. You know, Stephen Covey said, start with the end in mind. So what would it look like? Well, an ethical culture has to be an atmosphere that is reinforced by both the formal and the informal incentive processes that are in the company that promotes the kind of conduct we call ethical. What do we mean? Trust. We want to be sure that we're promoting the kind of behavior that yields trust and therefore makes them and your company trustworthy. We want to promote the kind of behavior and attitudes that treats people with respect, so you're viewed as a respectful person or organization. We want to be sure that you are viewed as responsible, that you're accountable for what you do. We want to be sure that you're conscious of fairness. We want to be sure that caring and compassion and empathy is part of the the, the thought process of decision making and that the notion of citizenship the idea of the six pillar of character is that you follow the rules. So again, the six pillars of character are going to be the focal point. That's how we begin. Trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. Well, how do we get that into the culture? Well, we first have to start out with the notion of who you're recruiting and how you're recruiting them and how you incenting them. Look, it is possible to bring in people in your company who don't have very good values, and hopefully you can make them have good values, but that's pretty tricky, and it's not, it's not likely. So we have a simple mantra, hire for character, train for skills. So the first thing you want to do is to make the character traits that are critical to the culture that you want to have really important when you're looking for people. And what you have to understand is most people have both the capacity and the willingness, even the great desire to be ethical, but sadly, an awful lot of people also have a willingness and a desire to succeed that's so strong that sometimes they're willing to sacrifice the ethics in order to accomplish success. And so you want to do your best to make it clear to that person at the very earliest stage of recruiting and interviewing that to succeed in this company, we want to create an atmosphere where people are honest. And you need to say we expect that. Now, of course, to say that and not do it is, is just a sham and hypocrisy. So, you know, we have a simple mantra, whatever you allow, you encourage. So if you really are going to say that we want our people to be respectful, we want our people to be trustworthy, something negative has to happen when people are not that. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean if you're trustworthy and respectful, you'll necessarily be promoted, because you also have to be competent. We expect you, you have to do your job well. But it should definitely be the case, if you're not honest or respectful, you can't be promoted. In other words, it's a minimal requirement, not a guarantee of success in the company. And so, one, you have to say it, and you have to mean it, and then you have to back that up. So we use a very simple structure that we call TEAM stands for four things you have to do in creating an ethical culture. And by the way, this works not only in good management, this works if you're a parent, this works if you're a coach. It's how you instill values as an operational part of a person's decision making. The first part of it is called team. Well, the word is team, and the first part is T, which stands for teach. The notion is you've got to be certain that within the various training, within the performance reviews, within the discipline processes, and within any mentoring that you're reinforcing the kind of behavior you want. What do we mean by being honest? Does that mean we're going to volunteer things? Are we going to tell our clients that we've discovered something in our product that might be dangerous to them, so we're going to be candid? Well, is that what trust requires? Yeah, it does, because if they find out later you knew and you didn't tell them, they distrust you. So we have to teach them what trust is. So teach means we've got to identify what that value looks like in the company and be sure people know what it looks like. Sometimes setting examples and praising it. Secondly, we've got to enforce it. That means we've got to have appropriate consequences that are proportional to the behavior. 
Now, by the way, the real word should be reinforce, but then my acronym would be TRAM instead of TEAM, and it just doesn't have that same kind of marketing punch. But what I mean by reinforce is if somebody does it right and they make the courageous right move to congratulate them and hold them out as here and say nice job, just like there must be a negative consequence if they do the wrong thing. Remember what you allow, you encourage. So you must enforce these values consistently. And it can be informally by just saying, come on, I expected better of you. Or it could be much more serious sanction. Third, you have to advocate it. And that means all over. Don't just say it at the beginning and have it on a wallet card. It should be emblazoned on your walls. It should be part of the performance review. It should be part of your annual reports. It should be in your recruiting literature. This is what we stand for. This is what we mean. One of the best companies I've ever seen who knows how to do this is Johnson & Johnson. And they literally have their credo in stone carved in stone in this monumental thing in their headquarters and virtually every office has the credo and they expect their managers to know it and refer to it. So we've got to advocate who you are and finally you've got to model it. You've got to be certain that you're not just telling people, you can't as a manager say, why don't you treat people with respect you little jerk. That's not a very good technique. You've got you've to model it. You've got to be thinking about your own conduct as to whether you're modeling it. There's a story about this young man comes, uh, he's home and he's doing his project. His father comes and he says, wow, you've got all these magic markers, all different colors. He said, fabulous, where'd you get these? He says, well, I took them from school. He says, are you allowed to do that? He says, not really, it's, uh, not really but it's a stupid rule, but I need them for this report. I'll return them when I'm done. And the father says, I can't believe you. That's against everything I ever taught you. If you needed them so badly, why didn't you tell me? I would have taken them from the office. The point is, is he wasn't modeling it. So you have to teach, enforce, advocate, and model. And then you empower people to protect and advance this culture. If you have an ethical culture, it works just like the body does when you get an infection. If there's misconduct, like an inappropriate sexual remark or a dishonest statement, you don't want to just have somebody go to the boss or catch him on film. What you hope is that the employees will stop it. If your body gets an infection, it produces white blood cells that surrounds that infection, devours it, and ends the threat and the infection. That's what you want in a good company. You want the employees to be the white blood cells who simply say, we don't do it here. That's not the kind of company we are. That's not our culture. Because in this place, character really counts.